Welcome to lesson 6 of the Adobe InDesign CS3 suite. We're going to be looking at colour in this lesson. So first of all we need to locate the lesson 6 folder and here I'm going to find it in Bridge and double click the 06a.indd file, open it in InDesign and then save it with my own name which is 06 underscore colour spelt in the British way with a U unlike in the booklet where it's got it in the Americanized version. Save it in my documents folder and now I have a file that I can work on and make changes as I wish. So the main place to be looking at colors in InDesign is in the swatches palette. So let's go to the swatches palette, open that and choose new color swatch. Now we can deselect the name with color value option so that we can give our new color a recognizable name of our own choice and in this case we're going to choose brown. We can leave the color type as process, we're going to leave the color mode as CMYK because this is a job for print and then give CMYK values to create our brown. So there'll be 0, cyan, 76, magenta, 76, yellow and 60, brown, uh, black, sorry. If we click add, now we're going to make another colour. Okay, so we type in blue And I'm actually putting in the values for a tan colour by mistake here. So there's a cyan 2, magenta 13, yellow 29, black 0. So after we click out of the black, you'll see that this is actually a tan colour. So we'll change the name to tan. Click add. And now we'll add the blue colour. So type in blue, and this time we'll give it a 60 cyan and 20 magenta. So we've got a greeny blue, and then we can close this swatches, or this dialog box. And we've got these new colour swatches, and they've appeared at the bottom of the swatches palette, the brown, tan and blue colours. Now we're going to click in the top right of our spread and we've selected a group of three diamonds and which we are now going to ungroup so we can select them individually but we're going to lock the position so that we don't accidentally move them. So if we deselect all using edit deselect all and now we can zoom in with the zoom tool over to the area of those diamonds and with the selection tool we can select them individually so if we select the middle diamond we can now change it the uh, target so that we're looking at the stroke of that diamond choose a green pattern from the swatches palette and the line around that diamond goes green. If we choose edit, deselect all, we can click on the left hand diamond and with the stroke still selected we're targeting the line around the outside we'll get, we can choose brown. Now if we change to the fill and choose green we we'll now get that green colour. Now if we want to transfer those attributes to the diamond on the right, we can pick up those attributes with the eyedropper. So we click on the left hand diamond and go over to the right and click and it will transfer the stroke and fill attributes to that object. Now if we choose deselect all
Now with the middle diamond we're going to change its fill pattern to paper which means that whatever the paper pa colour is that we are printing on that's what will show through in that diamond as it's currently uh, set. Now if we go to view and fit page in window we can select the small diamonds at the bottom right of our, our design. Hold down shift and click on each in turn. Go to the swatches palette, choose the stroke and then choose brown and they will have a stroke of brown. Now we can do some other stroke options if we click on the black border around the design and if we go to stroke, the stroke uh, palette and from type we can choose dashed we get the opportunity to create a dash line with attributes of our choice. So if we put in a dash of 16 and a gap of 4 followed by a dash of 2 and a gap of 4 we will be creating a dash line. Now at the moment the black and the, the dashes are all black but if we change the gap to brown you'll see the repeated dash pattern made up of black and then brown for the gap. So we can save this after deselecting everything and now do some uh, work with gradients. So in the swatches palette again we can choose new gradient swatch. Now we can give it a name based on the colours that we are planning to use. So if we choose brown slash tan swatch or gradient, sorry. We can click on the left hand marker. We just check that the gradient type is set to linear and not radial. Go to the bottom, click on the gradient ramp. The stop colour is set to swatches, so we'll choose one of our swatches, which we'll is brown. And then if we go to the bottom right, the right hand marker, change the stop colour to swatches and choose tan. We've now got our brown to tan gradient. So we're happy with that, we can click OK. So let's zoom in again to our diamonds at the top right. And the middle diamond, currently set with a fill of paper, we can change that to a gradient. So if we select it with the selection tool, click the fill pattern and choose brown, tan, gradient, we've got a gradient from left to right, the default based on the gradient we made. We can change the direction of the gradient with the gradient swatch tool. So if we choose the gradient swatch tool and drag diagon diagonally from top left to bottom right, we will then change the direction of the gradient. We can experiment here and drag a short line to create a much deeper gradient or we can just drag across the extreme of the object and create a gradient which goes diagonally rather than left to right as it defaulted. So we can choose save. 